What's going on guys? In today's video we're going to learn how to take these three photos of John Wall and we're going to turn it into this. Alright, the first step that I did for this particular graphic is I adjusted the levels and the camera raw filter for all three of my images. So you can do this by going up to filter and then camera raw filter. And the first thing I always go for is the texture and clarity. It just makes your images pop a little bit as well as gives it a little bit of design as well as a little bit of grain. Um, and in this particular edit, I decided to increase the contrast as well as the highlights and the shadows. The next thing I did was put a black and white adjustment layer on top and I set it to soft light. And what that does is just make some of the dark colors a little bit more dark. The next thing I did was put a levels adjustment on top. So you can do that uh, by going to new adjustment layer and then put a level layer. And then you're going to hit command I to invert the mask. And what you're doing is just revealing the multiply layer. So what the multiply layer is, is a dark layer. And so you're revealing all the dark layers. I do this for all my graphics. If you guys are subscribers, you know this. I darken all of the shadows that are on your images. So you can see um, in the before picture, the jersey has black lines throughout it. So I always go over those black lines with the multiply layer and that just makes them a little bit more dark. The next thing I did was add a screen layer and then I hit command I again to invert that mask. And then you go to your paintbrush and you want to go to the white layer again and you're going to reveal the areas where there is light. So on his face, on parts of his arm, those are areas of light and what you want to do is reveal those layers with the screen layer adjustment. The next thing I did was add a high pass filter. So you can do this by going up to filter, other, and then high pass filter. And then you can just put it on a different blend mode. I always choose soft light. So I did the same exact edit for all three of my images of John Wall. You want to do pretty much the same adjustments if it is a picture that is taken in the same spot. So for the picture of him facing backwards as well as the one with him facing forwards and not dribbling the ball, those are taken in the same exact place. So you can do the same exact edits for those. So what I mean is you can do the same exact camera raw filter, you can do the same exact levels and multiply adjustments to those. And what they're going to ultimately look like is very, very similar, which is exactly what you want. You'll want to have one that's lighter than the other. It will stick out like a sore thumb within the graphic. Now this is where the, the tricky part is. So after I added an adjustment layer and I changed it to multiply like I did the last one, the third one is a completely different photo. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have to adjust the selective color as well as the hue and saturation with that third photo. I adjusted the selective color with the, the second one just because it was a little bit of a funky picture. But for the third one, I added an unsharp mask and then I increased the texture and clarity. So those adjustments that you guys just saw there were a little bit different than the other ones just because it is a different photo. But I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a high pass filter over top. And what that does is just brings out those uh, the lights a little bit and it gives you that, that Instagram look that everyone, everyone wants to see. And the next thing I did was adjust the selective color. So I wanted him to be a little bit more red like the, the picture in the background. So I just went with a, a selective color and I adjusted those. You can slow it down and look at those if you would like. I also decided to add a film stock color lookup on the third graphic. All right, next up we got text design. So that is the John wall in the background as well as the number. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how I went about doing this. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add your text. I'm using super retro font. I will link that in the description, but you guys can use whatever font you want. This is all about just like learning how to do it. So what you're going to do is you're going to place a red rectangle or whatever color rectangle you want behind your font and you're going to clip it. 
So you're going to hit control and click on your text and you're going to hit create clipping mask. What that does is it just clips it to the red rectangle so that it is just one thing, one uh, object. And so then you can add your stickers. So you can see I added a sticker here and I hit create clipping mask for the red rectangle. So it looks like the, uh, the sticker and the font is being ripped. So it gives it a cool texture and it gives your graphic a little bit of life. You can see I did this for the John as well as the wall part and the number one was a little bit funky. It's not as cool as the John and the wall part but I knew that I still needed a red background around the one as well as like a little bit of a, a texture on it too. The third thing I did was add shadows. So I had the basis of my design. I added a court in the background. Uh, pretty simple, just place embedded in a court in the background. And the shadows is also pretty simple. All you gotta do is create a black dot and then change the perspective on it. And then the next thing you're gonna do is just blur it so that it is not as noticeable. So one of the biggest mistakes graphic designers make is they make their shadows super, super noticeable so that everybody knows that they created that shadow. You don't need to do that. The next thing is background design. So for this background, I decided to put the Rockets logo and as well as the map to the subway for Houston. So it creates a little um, cool background that I thought and it gave it some texture in the background and I decided to blur it in the end so that it wasn't a main eye focus. So you want to make sure that the reader is really focusing on whatever you want them to focus on. Like with a graphic, you want to make sure that they're focusing on the players or the stats that you want to put on there. But in this case, I want them to focus on the John Wall in the middle. I don't want them to be looking in the background. So I just blurred out the map in the background. But the next thing I did was color correction. So color correction can make or break a graphic. What it does is it just makes the graphics colors pop or it makes the colors blend a little bit better. So what I did is add two different color lookups. The first color lookup, I decided to put it at 30, 29. And what that did was it just made it a little bit brighter. And the next color lookup I did was a three strip. So that makes it a little bit more red. So I knew that I wanted the overall theme of this to be red. I wanted the skin to be a little bit red. That's a style that I like to do. And you can see the before and after. It's just a little bit red. You can really notice it in the arms. And then the next thing I did was add some vibrance. That just brings out the color a little bit. I didn't want it to be too red though. So I just left it. Um, I think I left it around 40 to 50. If you guys have listened all the way to the 8 minute mark, I want to award you with the PSD file. It means a lot that you guys are still here trying to learn the Photoshop and I want to award you with a PSD file just to help you learn a little bit more and as a thank you for listening all the way through my videos. The PSD file is going to have everything on it and it's going to really help you guys learn. If the file is something that you guys are interested, DM me on Instagram, I'll give it to you for free at editsbyjosh with an underscore. This is me just experimenting with a gradient map. I didn't really like how it was turning out, so I just put it to, to black and red. Uh, hit OK here, and then I just tried different blending modes. This is just a, a thing that I like to do with my color corrections. Just try to reverse them, just play around with it, lower the opacity. It, with color correcting, it's really knowing what you're doing with the colors and experimenting with the different adjustments if you guys aren't already subscribed please consider doing so we do a video every single week sometimes i drop two videos a week and if you want to follow me on instagram that's where i post the original photos first and then during that week i'll explain how i did them on my youtube channel